AMD is launching two mid-range GPUs today, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the RX 7800 XT that I have right here, and then I will cover the 7700 XT in my next video. So, the RX 7800 XT is a $500 or 560 euro graphics card that is pretty much a position just above Nvidia's RTX 4060 Ti and just under the RTX 4070, and it costs roughly the same as the three-year-old 6800 XT will cost you today. Now, we spent the last couple of days testing and retesting a bunch of GPUs, so let's see the results. Uh, let's see how these cards compare to each other in over 30 games on three different resolutions, and and let's see if this brand new RX 7800 XT is worth getting or not. Let's begin. Looking at the specs, the RX 7800 XT is in a bit of a strange spot. It is called the 7800 XT, but in their own communication, AMD compares it to the 6800 non-XT. And if we look at the core count, it also matches the 6800 non-XT, so it feels more like a non-XT successor, even though it is called XT. The same goes for the price. The 7800 XT launches at $500, which is actually lower than the launch price of both the 6800 and 6800 XT. But keep in mind, uh, those cards launched mid-pandemic uh, when the demand was pretty high and the prices were extremely high. Now you can get a new 6800 XT for about $500 or 550 euros nowadays, uh, making it a perfect comparison for this video. The 7000 series does have some improvements. Uh, it uses a better process, which typically leads to better efficiency. The clock speeds are up, uh, memory performance is up, and it comes with some nice extra features like uh, AI accelerators and support for AV1 encoding. Now, compared to its main NVIDIA counterpart, the 7800 XT has more memory. So the RTX 4070 has 12 gigabytes, while the 7800 XT comes with 16 gigabytes of memory. The card I'm testing with is the AMD reference model, uh, which actually looks and feels like a really solid card. It is not too large, so it should fit most cases, but it is slightly thicker than two slots. So if you plan to make a build in a smaller ITX case, uh, do make sure it will fit before buying it. AMD typically adds red details to their cards, but they kept it very minimal this time around, so it should match really well with the majority of motherboards and majority of cases out there. It uses two regular 8-pin power connectors, so you don't need to worry about adapters or getting new cables and so on. And unlike Nvidia, who is still using DisplayPort 1.4, AMD does include three DisplayPort 2.1 connections next to a single HDMI 2.1 connection, which, which is all very nice, but you can also argue if this is actually useful on a card that is aimed at 1440p gaming. But let's get to the actual performance right away. So for this video, I will be comparing the $500 7800 XT to the $500 6800 XT, uh, the NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti, which is about $100 cheaper, and the RTX 4070, which is about $100 more in the US, or about 70 euros more here in the Netherlands. The RX 7700 XT will be slightly cheaper, However, I didn't get it early from AMD and I cannot include it in this video, but Gigabyte was kind enough to send one over, so we are testing it right now and I will talk about it in my next video along with their 7800 XT model as well. Now, let's start with Baldur's Gate 3, which is one of the best games I've ever played, I think. Now, this data was collected with the latest patch 2 applied, and on 1080p ultra settings, the 7800 XT roughly matches the 6800 XT, while the 4070 is just barely ahead. The 4060 Ti is trailing behind, but only when looking at 1% lows. On 1440p resolution, the average FPS remains great on the AMD cards, but the 1% lows do drop more significantly than with the RTX 4070, even if they still do look better than with the RTX 4060 Ti. Now, Starfield is an AMD feature title, and you can really see that in the results. The RX 7800 XT is far ahead of the other three cards, uh, showing really good numbers on both resolutions. And this is a brand new game that really struggled to hit 60 FPS on majority of PCs. You can see the 4060 Ti struggled to hit 60 FPS on 1080p, and the RTX 4070 falls below 60 FPS on 1440p as well. 
Now keep in mind, I am testing this in a city environment, so performance is worse here than in other parts of the game. And since Starfield is only officially launching today, it is very likely that it will see some performance patches in the next few weeks and that these numbers might end up being completely different, which is uh, why I probably won't include Starfield in the overall results today. Uh, Remnant 2 is another new title that came out a few weeks ago and here the 7800 XT comes out strong yet again, uh, beating both the 6800 XT and the 4070 by a good margin on both resolutions. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, the new card is a small upgrade over the older one with a small but almost insignificant lead over the 4070 at 1440p with the 4060 Ti trailing behind at well under 60 FPS. On 1080p, CPU limits come into play and the three better GPUs uh, ended up performing similarly. In Spider-Man Remastered, the 7800 XT shows a small improvement over the 6800 XT, yet again, but here the 4070 is ahead by a significant margin on both 1080p and 1440p, with the 4060 Ti not far behind the AMD cards. God of War is a game that really seems to do well with AMD. The 6800 XT was already ahead of the 4070 and the 7800 XT extends that lead by a good margin, even if all cards manage to play this game well on both 1080p and 1440p. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is an AMD sponsored title uh, and it ends up looking similar to God of War. The 7800 XT is ahead of the 6800 XT and the 4070, on 1080p and 4040p, with the 4060 Ti again trailing by quite a bit. Dying Light 2, on the other hand, is an NVIDIA-sponsored title, uh, even though that isn't that obvious from these results. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the new 7800 XT actually ended up dropping a bit behind the 6800 XT, and with that, the RTX 4070 as well. Cyberpunk 2077 is another NVIDIA sponsored title and generally we saw NVIDIA GPUs outperform their AMD counterparts in each class. However, the RX 7800 XT shows improvement over the 6800 XT pretty nicely, which puts it ahead of the RTX 4070. Although, do keep in mind that this is on high settings without ray tracing where NVIDIA would typically do better. Doom Eternal is a super easy game to run and as always uh, pretty much every recent GPU will run this very smoothly on any resolution. Still it is a very good test uh, because it scales well with GPU performance. Uh, here the 7800 XT dropped below the 6800 XT, especially on 1080p and the RTX 4070 is ahead. In Formula 1 2022 on ultra high settings which include ray tracing, uh, so it generally favors Nvidia cards, the RX 7800 XT is again a small upgrade over the 6800 XT. The 4070 is a bit ahead here but not by a huge amount. As always, to keep it a bit shorter, I'm not going to talk about every individual game because uh, most titles do follow the same trend of what you can expect from this card. Uh, so let's look at some summaries instead. On 1080p, the 7800 XT gets you 120 FPS or more in almost every title of 33 games we tested for this video. Now there are a couple of exceptions like Starfield and Microsoft Flight Simulator that sit a little bit below that, but those are running into CPU limitations and I still think they are perfectly playable. On 1440p, which is probably the more reasonable resolution for a $500 GPU, you would generally get a 100 FPS plus experience as well, with a couple of exceptions in the 70 to 90 FPS range. Now, all those titles do include FSR if you want a bit more FPS, so it will definitely still be a capable 1440p card in the years to come. Now, the 7800 XT is not really marketed as a 4K card, but I still think it's worth testing on this resolution when you have a card in this price range uh, and it doesn't look that bad overall. So the majority of games do run comfortably at 60 FPS or more, but the 7800 XT does start to show some weaker results here uh, with some games down into 40s or even 30s. But generally speaking, uh, you can get those above 60 FPS using FSR yet again. Uh, some games like Nvidia sponsored Control uh, do not have that option, but if you're okay with dropping rare titles like that to medium settings instead, uh, you will still get an okay 4K resolution experience overall. 
Uh, when we compare those numbers to the three-year-old RX 6800 XT, they actually end up being very similar. On 1080p, the 7800 XT is a bit faster in most games, uh, sometimes with 10% or more, but there are games where it's a bit slower as well. On average, the 7800 XT ended up only 3% ahead of the 6800 XT. On 1440p, uh, where we have fewer CPU bottlenecks, the 7800 XT is faster in most games, but again, by a very small margin. And overall, there is only 3% between the two cards in 7800 XT's favor. On 4K resolution, we get a very similar picture as before, with the 7800 XT being about 4% faster than the 6800 XT. So when we look at the raw performance, it is very clear that the 7800 XT is not really an upgrade over the last gen 6800 XT. It does look a lot better when you compare it to the RTX 4060 Ti, the 8 gigabyte version. Uh, even on 1080p, the 7800 XT is faster by almost 30% on average. And on 1440p, that gap grows to more than 40%, which is a huge difference in overall experience. The 8 gigabyte 4060 Ti is significantly cheaper, but when you're already spending $400 or more on a 4060 Ti, I would personally be very tempted to just spend another 100 or so uh, for these much, much better numbers. But when we compare it to the RTX 4070, which does cost about $100 or 70 euros more than the 7800 XT, the results are once again very close. On 1080p, both cards have some clear wins, but overall, there is a very slight 2% lead for AMD. On 1440p, AMD pulls ahead a bit, offering more FPS in the majority of titles and ending up about 5% faster on average in these 30 games. And on 4K resolution, it looks about the same as on 1440p. Nvidia wins some, AMD wins some more, and again, AMD is ahead by 6-ish percent, which is very nice considering it is a cheaper product of the two. But it is very, very important to understand here that all these uh, gaming percentages can be completely different depending on uh, if you test more games that prefer NVIDIA or you test more games that just prefer AMD. Uh, it can also depend on which game settings you're using, uh, which part of the game you're in, or if you're just using a built-in benchmark. And this time around, it can even really, really depend on which GPU model you're using for your testing. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I am currently testing the Gigabyte 7800 XT Gaming OC, for example, uh, which looks to be about 5% faster than the reference model I use for this video. So do not just compare these raw percentage numbers to other review channels and then expect them to be exactly the same, but just try to watch as many comparisons as possible and then use that information to form a wider picture, I would say. If you want to know the exact system configuration we use for our testing, uh, do check the description of this video because I will leave all the details down there. Anyway, uh, one area where AMD still has some catching up to do is power consumption. On average, our 7800 XT used about 252 watts compared to 196 watts for the RTX 4070, so there is 56 watts between the two cards. And that might make a significant difference depending on how much time you spend gaming and how much you pay for electricity in your region. So if your electricity is very cheap, uh, let's say 10 cents per kilowatt hour, and you only game about two hours per day on average, uh, you're only looking at a bit over $15 of a difference over a four year long period, which no one should really care about. But if you play a bit more and you pay a bit more, you might end up spending the money you just saved on a 6800 XT on your power bill instead, uh, shifting the value slightly in Nvidia's favor. Or if you're in the EU with much more expensive power, the difference can start to be a real problem for AMD. So if you game a lot while paying 35 cents per kilowatt hour, like many of us do here in the Netherlands, uh, the 7800 XT might actually end up costing you more. And if we have another very problematic winter like we did last year, uh, when the rates actually went up to one euro per kilowatt hour, buying the more efficient GPU could end up costing you a lot less in the long run. But hopefully that will never happen again. 
So overall, I do think that this new GPU will make sense for some people, but not so much for others. And there is definitely some things I do like about this new card, but there are also some things that need to be discussed. First of all, I really don't agree with the naming of this card because for some people that don't spend a lot of time looking at reviews and looking at numbers, it is not clear enough that the 7800 XT is not really an upgrade if you already own a three-year-old 6800 XT. Uh, you do get slightly better efficiency than the last gen cards. You get some newer features like AV1 encoding, for example, but the overall raw performance is only a very tiny bit better than you get on a similarly named three-year-old card. And just like I said for recent NVIDIA launches, uh, it really feels like they're doing the bare minimum for these cards to just barely make sense instead of making exciting products that we all want to see, which is kind of disappointing. If you were deciding between these two GPUs, because they do cost the same, I would get the 7800 XT unless the price of the 6800 XT drops even further. For 1440p resolution specifically, I think that the 7800 XT does a great job at making the RTX 4060 Ti even more pointless than it was before. Uh, the Radeon does cost a bit more and it uses a bit more power, but it is also a lot faster. Now you can argue that Nvidia's feature set is still a bit stronger, that DLSS is still ahead of FSR and Nvidia offers functional frame generation while AMD's FSR is still in the promise phase but 40 plus percent extra raw performance that the 7800 XT offers is more than enough to make you forget about all those feature differences. If you're already willing to spend $400 on an 8 gigabyte 4060 Ti, I really suggest you spend a bit more on this much faster 16 gigabyte card instead. And then especially so if you do plan on upgrading to 4K resolution somewhere in the future. The RTX 4070 is the main competitor that potential 7800 XT buyers should look into before making a decision. The 7800 XT is a bit cheaper, it has a bit more memory, and it's a little bit faster if we look at uh, rasterized games. But the performance difference between them is very, very small, and it depends on which game you're looking at. So at this point, uh, some features or better efficiency might be a deciding factor between the two cards and Nvidia does have a stronger feature set at the moment and it does use less power. So the RTX 4070 remains a strong option unless you just want to play Call of Duty or Starfield. Uh, but you know, who knows? Uh, GPU prices in general do seem to be going down and if this AMD card ends up being even cheaper than the 4070, it would be a clear recommendation. Still, I'm very happy that there is a more competition in this segment, uh, even though I'm also a bit disappointed it's not as exciting as I wanted it to be. But either way, I really do hope that this video was helpful enough to give you an idea of what to expect in more than 30 different games. And if you want to know how the Gigabyte 7800 XT performs, as well as their uh, 7700 XT, uh, do check my next video that I will hopefully finish tomorrow. Now that's all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you, all for watching. Thank you all for watching and for sticking to the end. Uh, if you liked it, if you want to see more videos like this one, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one.